mes amis, je m'appelle Mindy. No, we're not doing this. All right. Yeah, that's a good try, but that's, I apologize to any French people that are watching that had to put up that display. So, today, uh, we are going to do a little video. I'm going to taste five wines from France, all unusual wines, wines you're not going to expect. We've got some Burgundy, some Provence, a little Chardonnay, Alsace, Sancerre. Now, you probably all just went, what the hell is this idiot talking about? He said he's going to taste some unusual wines and then just named basically five, but probably the most common ones you'll find. Well, okay. Uh, you're right, but what if I told you the wine from Provence isn't rosé? It's white. What if I told you the wine from Burgundy isn't Pinot Noir or Chardonnay, but Aligote, kind of the third grape from Burgundy, which gets very little love. Uh, if I told you the Chardonnay wasn't obviously not from Burgundy, it's from the Jura region of of France, uh, off to the uh, mid mid eastern uh, part of the of the country, I think. Uh, Alsace, we're going to go to Alsace. We're not going to have Riesling. We're going to have Sylvaner and Sancerre. Well, nothing that unusual about Sancerre except that it's red, Pinot Noir from Sancerre. So I think these are going to be five wines that uh, are not you know, incredibly rare, um, but they're. Pretty unusual. Certainly, when you go get a Sancerre in a liquor store, you're not getting Pinot Noir very often. Um, Sylvaner used to be a bigger grape in Alsace, I understand, but now it's down under 10% of their plantings. So, anyway, we'll get more into them as we go along. We're starting off with the one from Provence here uh, Domaine de Lille Blanc. It is 100% Roll. Uh, that's the grape, R O L L E. And if you don't know what that is, we would uh, know, probably know it better as Vermentino. Um, so, same group. So here we go. 2018, I'm not mistaken. I believe this was a gift. Uh, we, we had some friends that went to uh, France a couple years ago. I believe they brought this back as part of a three pack, I think. If not, I have no idea where I got it from because I wouldn't go out of my way to get wine from, a white wine from Provence. Mm, okay, so what we got here? Well, look at the color. Very uh, deep golden yellow color. Darker than I thought it was going to be. Mm. So definitely some sea spider off the bat. Almost like a, uh, like a white peach. Mm. Medium intensity aromas. It's not really jumping out of the glass. The, um, the sea spray jumps. Fruit is less so. There is... Uh, some floral characteristics as well, white flowers, white flowers, maybe jasmine. Mm. Smells nice though. All right, let's dig into the first ever wine, white wine I've ever had from Provence. Uh, definitely got a salinity. Um, Smells quite a bit like it tastes. Uh, white flower, like a floral characteristic. There's a tiny bit of herbaceousness. Um, stone fruit, but it's not really, it's not really fruity. Interesting. I'm trying to think back to the last time I had a Vermentino from, from Italy. I don't think it tasted anything like this. Well, it has been a while since I've had Vermentino. Mm. Fruit picks up in the second, second swish, swish. It's got almost a something slightly off-putting about it. It's not a terrible wine at all, but. Maybe there's a reason Provence is known for rosé, eh? Mm, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad, but I feel like there's an awful lot of alcohol in it. It's 14.5. Still seems a little hot. Even at three years old, I have no idea whether this grape is meant to age in, for, in um, Provence or not. I think. Vermentino ages 
pretty well, but not long term, I don't think. Although I don't know a ton about Vermentino either. Hmm, interesting. Okay, well, so something different. Uh, I. Eh, eh, it's okay. So I bet you the other four will be better. All right, so let's see what's next. Okay, here we go with the second wine. Now we've gone to Burgundy. Ooh, to uh, 2017 Alagote from Domaine Daniel Rion et Fils. So, how much Alagote is planted in Burgundy? About 4,200 acres, um, as opposed to about 32,000 acres of Chardonnay. So, uh, it is the number two uh, planted white wine grape, but of course Chardonnay is king in Burgundy and it's not even close. Uh, where else can you find Alagote in the world? The East, a lot of the Eastern European countries sell it, um, plant it. Um, Bulgaria, apparently, uh, I was reading, has about twice as much Alagote as Burgundy does. Although it is, a, it is Burgundy is home. Uh, there's a little bit of Washington State, I understand. A little bit of California, I think. Don't think we have any of this in BC, pretty sure we don't. And I think there's actually a, a winery or two in uh, Eastern Canada, in uh, Niagara region, that, uh, that make plants this. So it smells a little Chardonnay-ish. Hmm. There's like a moderately oak Chardonnay. There's some citrus there, there's a little bit of... Definitely a little bit of evidence of oak, but not, he not heavy oak. Hmm. Doesn't taste that sharp. <coughs> Six Chardonnay, excuse me. Well, that is really fruity. Uh, acid's off the charts, like Riesling level of acid. Wow. Better than the one from Provence, for sure. But uh, yeah, lemon zest, lime, like a grapefruit pith. There's really no oak characteristics on the palate at all that I'm getting here. Mm. Let's go do a little more research on this because I have um, I did only a little bit. I didn't want to. I didn't want to convince myself of what I was going to smell and taste. So I kind of just looked at the basics of this. So one of the other things about this, of course, is uh, compared to uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay in Burgundy, of course, those are two of the most uh, expensive bottles of wine you can find. This was 32 bucks at a private liquor store. Uh, it's just it's just not uh, in demand like those two, those grapes are. But nice to try something new again, and this is new. I've never had this grape anywhere from anywhere in the world, and I I like it. I, I would buy this again. I'm gonna. I think, I'm not trying to call this a patio sipper. This might be a, maybe begging for some seafood. And some oysters, mussels. Like a lemony shrimp, maybe like a shrimp cocktail if, it, if the cocktail soft doesn't get in the way. Yeah, interesting, nice wine. And a 32 bucks, not a bad, not a bad bargain either. Hmm. Really acidic, really citrusy. Whew. If you're one of the people that just loves acid in wine, and lots of people love acid in wine, I think you're gonna really enjoy this one. All right, well now I got a dog at the door. She was having a nap, now she's got up and decided it's time to come in and bother me. So uh, I'm gonna go off with this one, and I will, I'll be back shortly to go to the next one. Okay, so here we go, wine number three. We're going to the Jura region of France. We have a little Chardonnay. Now the Jura region isn't that far away from Burgundy. I'm looking up on my map right now. But it's about as far east as you can go in France before you end up in Switzerland. So this is a region that I think not a lot of people are that familiar with. Certainly if you're going to Chardonnay or creamy, uh, you're probably going Burgundy. This is a good price. This is 27 bucks at BC liquor stores right now. And like I, you can't get a decent Burgundy Chardonnay for 27 bucks. So let's find out. Uh, the Jura region Ask the Somali next time you're in a, 
a restaurant about the Jura region. They'll get all tingly. It's one of the one of their things. Jura also has a, a red wine, a Trousseau, I believe, is the grape that uh, that sommeliers go a little uh, crazy for. I've never had it. I actually would like to find one. I haven't. I, I, last Christmas, I tried to find a Trousseau somewhere in the in BC, and I couldn't. Okay, so hmm, that's a lovely nose. Uh, not heavily oaked, but there's some some influence of oak. Tiny little bit of vanilla. It's like a mm, almond hazelnut. <sighs> nice mineralogy. It's almost a woody quality. Lemon zest or lemon curd. Yellow apple. Mmm, okay. It's like a sesame, like toasted sesame seeds. Alright, let's see if it tastes as good as it smells. Mmm, it's a nice one. First thing I get is the apple. The yellow apple comes right up front. And it almost, almost tastes first tiny bit you get, almost makes you think you're going to be getting apple juice here. Don't worry, it quickly becomes wine. <laughs> nice acidity, nice minerality. A little flinty, almost. Um, Lemon, curd, lemon, and ripe, really ripe yellow apple. <clears throat> not, as much of the, not as much of the nutty qualities as, as you got on the nose, but mm, intoxicating nose. I could smell it all day. And it's not, uh, I say that, and it, I, I've said that before about. Chardonnay, I love the smell of Chardonnay, but I usually love the smell of really well oak Chardonnay, really buttery, the hot, the bacon spices, the vanilla, the butterscotch, caramel, that kind of stuff. And there's not a lot of, look at the butterscotch or caramel here, there's a tiny bit of that. I don't, I don't know how much oak this sees, I don't think it says on here, but it sees some, I'm sure. Um, I'm not sure how much, I didn't look, look into the oaking. But, this, oh yeah, it's a... Mm. <clears throat> yeah, the apple is really prevalent, but the but the citrus is there too. It's lovely. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's a nice wine for twenty seven dollars. Uh, can't go wrong with that. Well, good one, nice. All right, uh, let's move on. Okay, here we go. Number four. This is I switched. Up. Let's skip the Sylvan and we'll get back to that one later. We'll do that one last. So kind of in the mood for a little Pinot Noir tonight. So here we are, 2015 Henri Pellet La Croix au Garde from Sancerre. Uh, as I mentioned before, Sancerre is a very famous region in the Loire Valley, but it's much, much more known for white wines, for Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and of course, they're world famous for Sauvignon Blanc, but about 20-ish percent of the grapes grown there are Pinot Noir. So. 20% is not nothing, obviously. I would suspect that a lot of people that are really, really familiar with French wine might have had Pinot Noir from Sancerre before. But here in the BC region, I don't think we can see a lot of it. I found this at uh, Liberty Wines in Park Royal, I believe, probably a year or two ago, maybe a year and a half or so ago. Uh, not Park Royal, I think uh, Grand Lounge. Anyway, um, $51.99, I believe I paid for this. Yeah. Uh, just because I want to try one, and you don't see them very often, so let's find out, shall we? Mmm, a lot of red sherry earth. Oh, 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 like a freshly excavated earth. Red sherry, cranberry. It's not really intense. Like a medium intensity of aromas, I would say. Or I'd read you what it says in the back here. Our family's been crafting wines in perfect accord with the terroirs in the valley of Morogue. At the east of the Loire Valley for four generations, this wine comes from a plot of Pinot Noir vines growing in limestone soil, planted by Henri and Eric Pellet in the Montigny area in 1981. 
All right, so, 1981, 40 years ago, these vines were planted, ish. So the red cherry is really quite pronounced. Some earth, a little bit of, oh, it was planted in limestone, which was a little, there's a minerality. The cranberry, I think. I like some, uh, let's see some raspberry. I don't think it's red raspberry. It's more like a black raspberry. It's a little more subtle. All right, let's, take, let's dive in and see if it tastes like it smells. It smells nice, but it's not really intense. It's not to, you know, it's for someone that might drink a uh, Pinot Noir from BC or, or California or something like that, or even Burgundy. It's much less uh, um, powerful on the nose. Mmm. Okay. Okay. Red fruit, red cherry, wild strawberry, red raspberry. Hmm. Definitely uh, framed with a with a real backbone of. of um, Minerality, the limestone really comes through that the terroir showing here. Interesting, I wish I had a good burgundy to pair to side by side taste it beside it. Um, because it's nice, but it's not knocking me over. Acidity is medium, tannins are medium minus, I think. I gave that one a really big swirl in my mouth. And on the mid palate, a little bit of blueberry showed up. Um, and the red fruit became a little more pronounced. I'll be interested to see if this just needs an hour. Because it's been open for 20 minutes. Uh, I decanted it. I didn't air it. I decanted it. 2015, right? Yeah, see, again, this is one of these interesting things about, like, I'm not totally unfamiliar with French wine. I have a reasonable amount of it. I have drank a reasonable amount of it. I've reviewed a reasonable amount of it. But this whole uh, exercise of uh, lesser known ones, or of course wines I've never had before. But I don't really know uh, the history of, of uh, Peter Noir and Sancerre. It's possible I should have left us in the cellar for another decade or so. Certainly, I wouldn't be drinking 2015 Burgundy right now. Uh, although 2015 was a brilliant year in Burgundy, so. Um, but, you know, those things really need to age. Uh, this doesn't have any of those um, herbaceous undertones that you get from Burgundy. That doesn't taste much like Burgundy at all. Of course, it's not Burgundy, but it's not that far away either. The Loire Valley and Burgundy are not. You know, the Loire Valley is a little north. Yeah, I mean, it's a little north of Burgundy, and it's very west of Burgundy. So it's a very different climate and terroir. So I would expect the wines to be the same, but this is pretty different. I would never in a gazillion years have blind tasted this as a wine from France, or at the very least not a Pinot Noir from France. Ooh. Fruit is coming through. Yeah, okay. All right, so I'm going to take this out to the living room and drink this with the wife for the next hour or so. I'll let you know uh, in the, well, I'll put a little note up here. Uh, if it changed significantly over the hour, two hours it takes to drink it, whatever, two hours. Uh, yeah, I take two hours to drink a bottle of wine. Um, but, uh, so then that's it. That's, this is four or five. So now let's see how the Sylvaner worked out. Okay, here we are. The last one. Last but not least, I hope, I'm sure. Uh, 2017 Sylvaner from uh, Eblen Fuchs, F-U-C-H-S, so I'm gonna pronounce that Fuchs as opposed to the other option, from Allsauce. 
Now, as I think I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, Sylvaner used to be a much more popular grape in Alsace. It's down to, I think the last number I saw was a little under 9% of Alsace wines is Sylvaner. Mmm, but I get a lot of honey on the nose. It's uh, white flowers, a bit of orange zest, I think. Mmm, bright yellow peach. Nice nose. Now, let's see what else we get on the palate here. Oh, wow. That's nice. I like that. Orange right up front. Peach, nectarine. Acidities. Damn, fruit flies. I've never seen fruit flies like this. Um... I say acidity, high, acidity is medium plus to high. Yeah, um, a bit of lime pith, I think. But orange, more orange, like an orange blossom. That's nice. This is, I'm sure, the first time I've ever had this grape from anywhere in the world. I don't recognize the Sylvaner at all. Um, I would say it's ever so slightly off dry, but I still like to say it was dry, but it's not bone dry like uh, you might expect. It's a tiny hint of residual sugar there. Alcohol's low, 12.8%, medium minus to low. Yeah. Um, Eblin Fuchs, E B L I N dash Fuchs, thirty three ninety nine at uh, uh, I don't remember where I got. It. I think private liquor store, but this is nice. This is one I look for again. Yeah, a lot of floral characteristics. Some some herbaceous characteristics on the palate too. Not really intense, but they're there. Uh, definitely some nectarine and peach. Orange blossom, orange zest. It's quite prevalent. Um, medium plus to long finish. Nice, that's a good one. That might be my favorite of the five. Although I did like the Chardonnay from the Jura too. And uh, yeah, so I think, I think, um, Signing up the this five in this little video series, I think we're at three for five. Uh, the um, uh, white wine from Provence wasn't very good, drinkable, I guess, but just barely. The red wine, the Sancerre Pinot Noir, uh, was perfectly tasty. Um, it was drinkable, but it but at fifty one bucks, it, it was too expensive. I wouldn't buy that again for that price. If it was twenty bucks, yes. Um, but I mean, for 51 bucks, I could probably get a half decent burgundy, red burgundy, right? Or at least a, I don't know, an entry level red burgundy, uh, if, you, if you want a Fred's Pinot. So I wouldn't recommend that one. Uh, the Aligote was nice, the Jura Chardonnay was quite nice, different, and this is nice. And you know what? They're all five wines I never had before. Uh, so that's kind of nice. That was kind of the point of the whole video to uh, uh, sample and uh, bring to you some wines that you probably never had before. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. If you've had any of these wines before, uh, let me know what you think of them. Um, and that's going to do it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you got uh, something out of it. Maybe you've got a few wines to try. Uh, I definitely think you should try some Alsatian, Alsatian Sylvaner. It's quite good. Uh, so until next time, drink great wine. See you soon. Thanks.